I started to launch Expedite end of last year, and I really s launched it, in fact, as from May this year. And the reason behind launching Expedite Ventures is the learnings I got by implementing Amadeus Next when I was still working for Amadeus, is I saw a lot of startups getting a lot of money, but not the advice or the market access that they needed. So what I thought was, like, what if we can combine the investment capital as well as market access, as well as expertise from executives to help these startups expedite to Series A. And that's when I launched it, and ultimately we raised a fund of totally $10 million. Um, yeah, and since May, I must say, it's been an exciting uh, path. Well, there is a bit, first of all, let me correct you on the word accelerate because there is a big difference between Accelerate and Expedite. Accelerate is go faster, Expedite is arrive faster, and deliver faster, right? That's why I really chose that name. Have we already? Um, I'm super excited to say that as from May, we almost got a startup a day reaching out to us for investment and help. Of course, not every startup that uh, reached out was an interesting one, so we had to deny a couple, but we're still in active discussion with around 20. Six, seven are in due diligence, and we have our first term sheet out. The moment that the investment is, 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 is finalized, in fact, that's when we really expedite these startups. Yeah, well, of course, if you look at on, on, on a global basis, there are a lot of stuff. Every startup is trying to challenge the status quo. Specifically for Asia, um, I think it goes beyond challenging the status quo. Asia has so many specifics in different markets, cultural differences, the specific problems that it has, that sometimes by just challenging the status quo is not good enough. And they leapfrog. And the mobile play, the, the whole thing that WeChat, for instance, did, that was really a leapfrog from desktop to, to mobile. And I see similar things happening. Um, uh, I give an example of a play, for instance, in India, right? If you want to take a train in India, you probably have seen the pictures, it, it's, it's a hassle. And you're not sure whether, you, even if you have a ticket, you're not sure whether you will be on the train. That's a problem that doesn't exist anywhere else. By just challenging it and making a booking online, it will not be proved. But there is a startup that is really predicting your success of when you buy that ticket, whether you will be on the train or not. These are very specific. So rather than challenging the status quo, I think Asia has the potential to leapfrog. We're focused on, on, apart from the fact that our general scope is travel tech, we're focused on three things. I want to see a great technology that has a potential to disrupt. I want to see an application of that technology that is important and is solving actually a problem in the industry. And of course, having just the technology, having just an application is not good enough to make a business. So you need to have a certain business model. Looking at it from a technology perspective, of course, the buzzwords like blockchain, IoT, AI are definitely things that have that potential. So not looking at that would be wrong as an investor. Right? More specifically, if you look at the applications, specifically in Asia, for instance, India, Indonesia, 60, 70 percent of the business is still offline. So the, the, the problems that need to be addressed there from an application perspective might be completely different than we all know already in Europe or in the US. And more specifically, I'm looking at a B2B marketplace, for instance. It's one fraud prediction, fraud prevention for online travel agencies is definitely. And then the whole part of ancillary merchandising. So enable airlines, hotels, beyond their main core business as an airline seat or a hotel room to upsell in the same effort. Yeah, it's a great thing. I think there has been uh, maybe too much money been thrown around. Um, and the main, I mean, there are three main problems why a startup fails. There is no market need, they don't have enough cash, and they don't have the right team. And one thing that the reason for setting up Expedite, because I'm certain that money doesn't guarantee success. So even with all the money they've got, it didn't guarantee success. So a lot of these early stage uh, startups failed, although they had enough cash. So the two other reasons is you don't have a market need, 
and you don't have the right team. From a market need perspective, in order to understand the market, you really have to, well, in, in order to find that market, you have to understand that market. And just solving a problem doesn't mean that it solves a market need. So that's where Expedite Ventures, with the expertise myself and the team, comes in to really shape maybe the initial idea of the, of the founder into something that the market actually needs. And then the last part is about finding the team. The team can be the founding team and the initial team around it, and definitely these are some challenges that Asia has. And that's why also Expedite is more about helping these startups with that expertise, maybe with some mark decks, with my roller deck, as they say. I mean, if I make some calls, probably some doors will open. And that's why uh, it's a good thing that it's not only about money anymore. It's not that. Um, you see, I mean, new players and, and, and Travel Gold Camp, for instance, is not really a new player, but you see the growth that they've gone through. Uh, there are still new players in the B2C. There are many markets still that, that are untapped for B2B, it's definitely here in, in Southeast Asia. The problem with it is why do you want to fight the big ones if the big ones have problems to be solved that you might be solving with a certain technology? And I give you one example. It was a startup that had a great technology. I'm not going to say the name, but a great technology inside. But they were using this as a B2B application, a B2C application, excuse me. They had 10, 15 million downloads on their mobile app. Fantastic. They didn't have any money. Just by pivoting to a B2B model, providing that technology and content to OTAs, within three weeks, three OTAs signed up and started making money. And a year later, they got acquired. Sometimes you need to really pivot from B2C to B2B to really be successful.